Hi, I'm Dr. Gene Preuss. I'm an associate professor of history in the College of Humanities and Social Sciences in the History, Humanities, and Languages Department. I was one of several Canvas pioneers, uh, first users of Canvas here on the UHD campus as we transition from Blackboard. And what I'd like to do for you uh, is to give you a couple of walkthroughs on using Canvas. First, one of the things that you'll notice is that there are some differences between Canvas and Blackboard, but they're not as bad as you think. One of the things that I found that worked best for me in working with Kansas is that you really need to plan backward. You think about your assignments first and you design them first rather than the way I used to do in Blackboard, which was kind of build down from uh, units and modules to assignments last. Also, there's a difference between the old folders that we used to use in Blackboard and modules and pages in Canvas. Canvas is really designed for the internet. The, what you see is what you get is very robust in Canvas. But if you do know some coding, that can be very helpful. It is easier to copy assignments and modules and units than it was in Blackboard. And that'll be very helpful as we move throughout these steps. Some of the influences that personally helped me as I transitioned were some of the programs that I've worked with, including uh, ASCNU, AACNU workshops, AVID post-secondary Title V grants with the old university college uh, personnel, and then a couple of workshops like Decoding the Disciplines, What the Best College Teachers Do, Achieving the Dream, and, of course, much help from UHD's CTLE and TTLC centers, uh, especially the ACUE, Effective College Instruction Program, and work that I and others did with the American Historical Association and the Gardner Institute Pathways Project. I also had an OCDI grant which helped me kind of focus my revisions a little bit what I wanted to work on uh, scaffolding, and by that I mean building from small projects to larger projects, from entry-level instruction to more advanced instruction and assignments, chunking the information, breaking it into smaller pieces uh, instead of a big dump of information that then they were expected to remember throughout the semester. Also, uh, I needed to be better organized. That was a problem that I knew that I had when I was working in the Blackboard classes, and I think that I focused on a uh, organizational scheme in my classes today that is much better, and even students have complimented me on. I also employ transparent design, and this is based off of the transparency and learning and teaching or tilt design of explaining things better to the students than I had in the past. Uh, like many professors uh, of my uh, generation, anyway, uh, we were kind of, uh, we taught as we were taught. We did the assignments that we had to do. And to us, it was very clear what we wanted. But to students who may be encountering history for the first time uh, in their college career, they may not remember what they did in 11th or even 7th grade. So it's better explaining what the outcomes are for each assignment, why we're doing these assignments, how they relate to the larger course, and what the directions are in a very straightforward way. I also worked with a learning cycle, a four-stage learning cycle that I'll explain a little bit later. And as I was saying earlier, you kind of have to plan backwards. So backward design was very important in my revision. So if I looked at my old Blackboard page, it was set up uh, very similar to the way my Canvas page is today, but there are some noticeable differences. First off, uh, I kind of have everything uh, arranged uh, in a format so that when people came to my homepage, when students came to my homepage, they would get a bit of information up front. 
and then they could go into the individual units on the left and that they would see this learning cycle that I was talking about, that there were introductory videos, that there were folders that I had set up, and then there was information within those folders. And so how I have it set up in Canvas now, and this is where the backward design came into play, I have modules, and within each module, I have a video introduction. I have some readings, I have assignments, and then I have a reflection piece. Now, within that, I have lectures and sometimes documentaries that I'll place in for students to kind of get a taste for the information. In the readings, they're going to get documents that they need to be familiar with in order to progress through the rest of the unit. And then the actual assignments, usually it's perusal. Uh, perusal, if you're not familiar with that, is kind of like a discussion thread for reading that is asynchronous. They can also do discussion either in class or asynchronously, and they can do discussion in one of two ways, either using voice thread or uh, a regular threaded discussion like you would traditionally see in a classroom. Finally, I have a reflection assignment, which is in effect, a journal entry asking them to think about the takeaways they learned in the unit uh, and to think about uh, any questions that they might have, anything that was confusing for them. So now that you've seen how I organize my class, you can see how I can focus on those assignments. And I'll need to focus on those assignments first when I start organizing my class in Canvas. And so that's what we're going to work on next is looking at some of the assignments and how to kind of build them and then build the class around them. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you soon.